Hi, it's Sharon here from Butterfly Lullaby and the date today is the 28th of September 2021 and here's my dyslexic quote. The message is always more important than the spelling and the grammar. Sharon J. Bainbridge, help stop dyslexic bullying. Um, I just got to say that I was very, very fortunate in school where I didn't get bullied. I wasn't bullied at all. I was very, very lucky. So when I see, you know, family and friends, people that I come across that have suffered bullying in state education, that makes me so upset for them because, you know, it's wrong. It's just so wrong. Um, When our daughter suffered with um you know bullying over being dyslexic in school she struggled um with the academia in her state education and she just needed one-to-one support she needed kindness empathy compassion and someone to say you can do it you know you are clever someone to just to tell her she's clever that's all she needed and that's what i did I turned our daughter into the most amazing dyslexic bookworm. So if I can do it, anyone can. I would love everybody to go over to the Dyslexia NHS website. Now here's a quote from the NHS. People with dyslexia often have good skills in other areas, such as creative thinking and problem solving. I absolutely love problem solving and I've solved a lot of problems and it's something that I really, really enjoy doing. I just wish that we lived in a world full of free thinkers that actually listened to other people and stopped putting up these brick walls, these academic elite brick walls that prevent others from having a voice and also stop us from creating solutions. Now, I'm going to show you a solution um, to dyslexics hating reading. I turned our daughter into a dyslexic bookworm. Before I tell you how to turn a child into a bookworm who suffers with dyslexia, I say suffers, actually it's a gift and it's a superpower, so I don't see where the suffering is. The suffering is education, doesn't understand creative minds. That's where the problem is. So we need to solve this problem together and start talking about it. And uh, yeah, let's get this out into the world and help one another to make education fun for everybody. So anyway, what I'd like to say is for all the people, the uh, spelling police out there that love to correct people on their grammar and their spellings, etc. You know, you're very fortunate that you've got a, what would I say, a photographic memory, a sponge-like memory where you can absorb all this information with no problem and so spelling and grammar comes easily to you but it's just you know just try and be kind i think the 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 thing is about dyslexics is that because we struggle um within the education system it actually creates a positive there because it makes us more aware of other people and what they go through and how they're suffering and it gives us empathy and I think that that is such a wonderful thing to have kindness empathy compassion is something that's missing within education and our government services and we need to get this back so anyway I'm going to share with you how I turned a clever creative audio visual thinking daughter This world labels dyslexic disabled into a bookworm. Number one, step one, take your child to the library. Let them pick four books. Now, make sure that they enjoy themselves. They will most definitely pick out all the colourful books, the books that rhyme, and allow this. Give them the opportunity to really, really engage with these books and make it really, really fun. Next, you need to get them to sing the story and write down the words they cannot sing or say. 
step three, you ask the child to write out 15 words they struggled with three times. Repeating this process is so important for dyslexia because, um, you know, we've got really, really bad memory. <laughs> but we've got so many positives, so I don't really care about the bad memory because the positives outweigh that. Step four, now ask the child to have a go at spelling those words. And make this as fun as possible. Make sure that you tell that child that it doesn't matter if they get these words wrong. It's not about getting them right. It's about actually helping them to remember these words. So, yeah, make it fun. Make it not stressful at all. And, uh, yeah, just give them as much positive feedback as you can. And, you know, make them feel clever. You have to do that because children with dyslexia are knocked down all the time. They're bullied um, for being different, for not being like the other children. Um, so, yeah, so you it's your job as a parent, a grandparent, to make sure your child, your grandchild, is made to feel like they are superhuman. <laughs> they have a superpower and they are able to find out what they're good at. You need to help them find what they're good at because they are good at something. And that's what we need to promote and support them with. Forget about everything else to support them on what they can do and turn that into a fun reading project. Get them to also make their own stories, create their own books. That's what um, I did with Melody. I'd have to try and dig out some pictures of some books she made. And I was so you know, amazed that she actually created a book. You know, she, she didn't know how to do it. She just, in her mind's eye, she got some cardboard. She did the front cover, the back, and she actually put in the pages and the pages flipped over. It's absolutely fascinating. I'm going to have to make a video about this because, you know, I think it's everything a child should do. They should all make their own stories and books because they have creative minds. And I love that. Just wanted to give a shout out to Dr. Erica Warren, who's a fantastic, amazing human being. She's a warrior. <laughs> I love the way she's proved everybody wrong. It's fantastic. You're going to have to go and check out her interview. I'm going to put the link in the description below. So check it out. The sad thing is, is that she was not only bullied for being dyslexic in school, but also in the home. Um, so that's why I wanted to do this video, because I just please, please, you know, let's let's stop that bullying and help her kids. You know, our children are important give them all they need to be positive in life so yeah her her interviews in the description below check her out and i cannot wait to be interviewed by her that's going to be in october i'd love you to come along and say hello to me and other people on this dyslexia gift reading support um group on facebook I'd love to hear your stories. I want to hear all about dyslexia and how you struggled with it or if you've not struggled with it. I just want to hear all about you. So come along and say hi and share your children's stories as well with us. In primary school, I was taught ITA English twaddle. Now I call it twaddle because that is exactly what it was. It was a backward alien language that made no sense whatsoever. And I'm quite shocked it's actually still being taught in the USA. And I feel sorry for these children because they deserve a better education. So, yeah, I had to relearn how to read, write and spell all over again as I got older because of this terrible education I was taught in school. But I didn't let that hold me back. And I was off sick all the time with asthma because academics, doctors, the media, governments all got my family brainwashed into believing smoking was harmless. So everybody smoked around me and I had to breathe that in. And, you know, when you're fighting to breathe with asthma, that is no fun at all. And I don't blame my family for this. I blame the people that promoted it as healthy. So my point is 
that some academics do make serious mistakes. And therefore, you know, dyslexics should have a voice in education and in government. And we also need to listen to people that uh, come from working class families, as I do. You know, I'm very proud of what I've achieved in life. And I'm even more proud of my daughter for what she's achieved and for never giving up. So never give up on your dreams. Always fight to get your voice heard because you're important. We all are. So have a fantastic day and good luck, everyone. Make this day count.